microphone. Thank you. Okay, it's time to our second speaker of this morning. So it's a place for me to introduce Professor Maria Luz Puertas, Marilu for Friends. I met Marilu in a nice conference in Jerez de la Frontera, uh, Spain, where uh, she was an uh, invited speaker. And uh, after this, we talked in some of the lunch time. And then uh, I have opportunity to visit uh, her university, which is uh, one of the most beautiful universities that I visit in, in Spain. So I invite everybody to visit Marilu in, in her university. You can find very good uh, food, a very, very nice beach, and of course, a lot of mud. So thank you very much, uh, Marilu. The time is yours. So thank you. Thank you, Rita, for your uh, nice introduction. And thank you very much for inviting me to this event. So let me share my screen. Okay. Okay. Um, let me. Now. Can you? So yes. um, today I'm talking about graph products and domination. So uh, I would like to. Uh, start with the graph products um, with some history about this uh, concept. Um, the definition of uh, these uh, two famous uh, graph products, the Cartesian product and the strong product, can be found in this paper by Gerd Sabiduzzi, Graph Multiplication, from 1959 uh, um, the purpose of, of the definition uh, was to study or to, to deepen the study uh, of the um, automorphic group of a graph. Uh, I put here the um, original definition. I know that it's in a, a, a it's quite old fashion, but um, if possible, I always like to see the, uh, the original definition because it's like um, filling the hand of the author writing um, the proofs and the definition and the, and the original ideas. So uh, in the paper, uh, Sabiduzzi proposed three different uh, products, the Cartesian, the strong and the quick ones. Uh, however, as you can see here, um, is um, for any uh, set of uh, indices. Um, for a finite uh, set of indices, the strong and the weak are, are the same. So if we are talking about just the product of two graphs. Here we have the Cartesian one and the strong one. And I, uh, I, show you, I, I will show the, the definition in a more modern notation. For the Cartesian product, the uh, vertex set uh, is the Cartesian product of both vertex sets. And um, two vertices, uh, GH and G prime, H prime, are adjacent in the Cartesian product if and only if uh, the first coordinates are adjacent in G and the second ones are equal, or the symmetric condition, the first coordinates are equal and the uh, second ones are uh, adjacent uh, in H. Um, as I said before, the uh, purpose was to obtain more information about um, the automorphic group of the graph. And the uh, results that uh, he shows are the uh, any graph has a unique prime factor decomposition respect, respect to the Cartesian product. That means that a graph G can be written as the Cartesian product of a number of graphs G1 until Gn in a unique way. Um, the um, alpha group of the graph is 
isomorphic in the sense of group to this uh, product of the uh, alphamorphins group of the factors. Um, about the strong product, uh, the vertex set is exactly the same, the Cartesian product of both vertex sets. However, the edges are different. So we have here two uh, vertices, GH and G prime, H prime uh, in the strong product. So the, these vertices are adjacent. If and only if you have the uh, first two conditions are the same. Uh, than the condition to the Cartesian product, but we have here an extra condition. So these two vertices are adjacent if the first coordinates are adjacent and also the second ones are adjacent. So we have more edges in the strong product than the, uh, in the Cartesian product. Um, however, uh, Sabiduzzi uh, doesn't use this uh, structure, the strong product, to uh, study the alphamorphic group of the graph, but he uh, provides the definition. Uh, um, for the lexicographic product, the definition is the, the same year, uh, 1959, uh, by Harari in this paper on the group of the composition of two graphs. Here is, uh, you have a picture of Harari. And again, the original definition. Um, I put here because uh, you can see here this um, the notation that G1 of G2, uh, but I put the more modern one uh, with this uh, circle or big dot um, uh, in the middle. The uh, vertex is the same. And um, for the edges, we have the two vertices are adjacent. Uh, if and only if, know that this condition appear in the previous product, the um, Cartesian product and the, um, the strong one. However, this condition is different, but uh, we have that these vertices are adjacent. If the first coordinates are adjacent, and nothing about the second ones. Um, the uh, target of this definition is also about the uh, alphamorphic group of the graph. So in the paper, uh, Harari uh, proved this uh, theorem, the uh, group of the composition of, of the graph is equivalent uh, um, to the composition of the groups, if and only if the case is that not both graphs are complete. Um, as I said in, the, in this year, 1959, but at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year, Sabi <laughs> um, um proof uh, a correct version uh, of this um, of this result, he uh, correct an, uh, a small mistake, and also he offered an extended version of this theory. But uh, all of them, all the result about the um, alphamorphic group of the graph. Um, the last one is the direct product, or also called the categorical product. Um, this is a uh, uh, a quite um, classical uh, result by these two classical uh, mathematicians, Whitehead and, and Russell, in the uh, book Principia Mathematica from the beginning of the uh, last century. Um, I put this in a small, uh, uh, very small, because um, it's a very general definition about a categorical product between two structures, um, in particular for graphs. This is the definition, the direct or the categorical product of two graphs with the same vertex set and um, with uh, just one condition to be adjacent is that, that uh, the first coordinate of the, ver of the vertices are adjacent and also the second coordinates are adjacent. Um, this uh, product is uh, quite different uh, from the other ones and um, 
the main difference is that is uh, the uh, direct product of two connected graphs is not connected necessarily. So in some sense, it's, it's quite different. Um, now let's go to uh, 1975, this paper by Ingrid Chan and Vicky, Associative Product Graphs. And in this very interesting uh, paper, the authors provide a common framework to study graph products uh, with uh, vertex set, the Cartesian product of both vertex sets. Um, he um, give this uh, matrix um, where they put here the relationship between the first coordinate of two vertices and here the relationship between uh, the second coordinate of two vertices where E means that there is an edge, delta means that they are equal and M means that there is no edge, they are not adjacent. And inside, they put the relationship between the vertices in the product. I put an example with the Cartesian product to understand this framework. And this is the, um, uh, the condition to be adjacent in the Cartesian product, uh, first coordinate adjacent and second equals, or first coordinate equal and second adjacent. So let's put here the letters. Of course, if the first coordinate of two vertices are equal and the second coordinates are equal, then the vertices are equal. So this delta is in the, in the middle in all cases. Um, for the Cartesian product, we have that uh, this condition says that if the first coordinate are adjacent, so this is the first coordinate, and E means there is an edge, so we are in this line. First coordinate adjacent, we are in this line. Um, second coordinate equal means that we are in this column. The second coordinate are equal. So first line, second columns. In this position, we put E. That means that the vertices are adjacent. There is an edge. And with the second condition, the same. The first coordinates are equal. So for the first coordinate, we are here in equal second line and second coordinate adjacent. So we have second coordinate, we are in the first column. So we have here um, the uh, first coordinates are equal and the second adjacent. So we put E in this position. And there is no other option to be adjacent in the Cartesian product. So the rest of the position except the center are non-adjacent. Um, um, this is the description of the uh, edges in the Cartesian problem. Um, sorry, as you can say here, we have one fixed position, which is in the middle, and eight position that can be N or E. And this means that there are 256 different graph products with vertex set, set the Cartesian product of two. Uh, the, the, the vertex sets. And the author shows that just 20 of them are associative, which is a very, very interesting property for a binary operation to be associative because you can increase the number of graphs that you can multiply. And uh, they also prove that uh, um, if you ask for some uh, interesting property for the projection, um, to the product, to the factors, um, then just a few um, uh, cases have good properties. They say that uh, uh, if uh, you ask for both projections to be weak homomorphisms, then just the Cartesian, the strong, and the direct product have this property. Um, if you ask for just or at least one projection, or one projection is a weak homomorphism, then the lexicographic problem. Weak homomorphism means that uh, the map um, uh, go, uh, you have an edge to adjacent vertices, they go to adjacent vertices or to the same vertices. So this is why these four products are the, uh, the most interesting. In this, uh, they say that essentially, 
uh, there are four graph products which are associative and at least one projection is a weak homomorphism. This is essentially because indeed there are some uh, others uh, product, but they don't use the uh, the adjacents in both factors. Uh, product with no edges or that you put all the edges so they are not so interesting. Um, so essentially the big four graph products are the Cartesian, the strong, the direct and the lexicography because they are associative and the projection to the factors are good enough. That's the idea. Um, I have shown before the matrix uh, for the Cartesian product and we have here uh, the four matrices for the four products, the Cartesian, the strong, the categorical, which is the, the direct and the lexicographic. And because it's a, a um, a very uh, a graphical way to uh, compare the edge sets uh, of two different products. As you can see here, the edges of the Cartesian product and also the edges of the categorical product, which are independent each other, they are edges in the strong product. And moreover, the edges of the strong product are also edges in the lexicographic product. So there is a natural inclusion between the edge sets. Um, um, as I said before, the original idea to define this uh, graph operation was to study the alphamorphin uh, group of the graph. However, uh, you have a new structure, a new graph or new operation. Uh, of course, there are a lot of graph properties that you can study in this new graph. Um, Sabiduzzi, in this uh, paper of 1957, uh, studied the um, chromatic number of the Cartesian product. Uh, I put this example of, uh, uh, I would like to notice that this paper is uh, two years uh, uh, early, uh, is uh, in 1957, and the other one, the paper about um, graph products is two years later, 1959. However, in this paper, Sabiduzzi mentioned at the references, the other papers and he put under um, uh, submitting. So it took uh, two years to publish the paper about the graph products. Um, I put this example uh, for the chromatic number because it's, um, uh, it's a, a parameter of the graph that fits uh, with the Cartesian product, that completely fits with the Cartesian product. In the sense that you can describe the chromatic number of the Cartesian product in terms of the chromatic number of both factors for all graphs is a general formula and it's a quite easy formula. It's the maximum of the chromatic number of both factors. And moreover, in the proof of this equality, the uh, Cartesian structure is used. Uh, on the one hand, for this uh, inequality, uh, the uh, chromatic number of the Cartesian product is uh, greater than both chromatic number of the factors. Um, the proof is, uh, uh, is uh, done by using the projections, the natural projection to both factors. And the other inequality uh, can be obtained uh, constructing a coloring in the Cartesian product using minimum coloring of the factors. It's like going up and down from the factors to the Cartesian product and coloring down uh, produce coloring up and coloring up produce coloring down. So uh, everything fits. Um, so it's a nice example uh, how um, the uh, Cartesian product is a structure that uh, share um, uh, or good properties uh, with the factors. Uh, this, this example with the coloring. However, uh, this is not always the case. So let's talk about domination. 
Um, in general, uh, it is considered that the first idea about domination in graph is uh, a kind of chess uh, puzzles that uh, were very, very popular uh, at the end of the uh, 19th century. Uh, this kind of question, find the minimum number of queens needed to occupy or attack all square in a um, chess table. I put down uh, a, a solution uh, of this, uh, a possible solution of this problem. Um, with five queens, you can do that to occupy, occupy or attack all squares. Uh, you can uh, uh, find different arrangements. Indeed, this uh, problem is uh, known as the, the problem of the five queens. Mm, and as I said, uh, it is um, considered that this is the, the first idea about domination in graph, but the formal definition of domination uh, can be found in this book by Berge uh, around the same, um, the same years that the definition of the graph product is 1958. This is not the original definition because the book is in French. And I don't have the book. But this is uh, a definition, the, the same definition from a paper uh, from Berge, 1960, two years later. Uh, at the beginning, uh, the name was not domination, was external stability. Um, this is the, the definition uh, for a graph G with vertex set X and H set. This is. Um, this is the edge set. A subset of vertices is called externally stable if every vertex not in the set has a neighbor in the set. That means the uh, open neighborhood intersect the set. So that's uh, uh, the externally stable set that we uh, call now dominating set. And the external stability number is the minimum number of elements of an externally stable set, which is the uh, modern domination number. The chain of the names, uh, I put here um, the, uh, the name of dominating set and dominating and domination number appear in the uh, classic book by Ore, uh, but, but uh, with the uh, notation D, and uh, finally, the modern notation uh, with gamma is uh, from um, 1977 in a paper by Cocaine and Hedniemi. Um, and if we are talking about domination and product, uh, we have to talk about Badin BC. Um, Badin BC proposed. Uh, uh, in these two papers, uh, usually uh, both are mentioned at the origin of the study of the uh, domination number in Cartesian product, but uh, the, the first one was the Cartesian product of graphs uh, from 1963. Uh, and he uh, proved theorem seven and proposed uh, also a question. Again, it's not original because the original um, paper is in Russian. So this is a, a translation, but it's not a modern translation. Uh, it's a, a translation into English um, a few years later. And he proved this uh, theorem, theorem seven. Uh, beta here is the domination number, it's the, the original notation for the domination number. And here this uh, product is the Cartesian product. And he says, okay, the domination number of the Cartesian product um, is not always the same formula. However, uh, he tried to put some upper and lower bound. And in theorem seven, he provides an upper bound. He said that uh, 
uh, the domination number of the Cartesian product is left of equal than the domination number in one factor uh, times the number of vertices of the other factor. Um, in this, this is a very, very large uh, upper bound in general, but in some cases, um, is uh, is the, the 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 value of the domination number, but in general, it's a very very large uh, upper bound. Uh, however, um, in the paper, we can find this sentence that uh, I, I I love this sentence and the way the author said, okay, I have a problem here, and, and I I'm not able to to say anything about this problem. The, the sentence says the author, however, was not able to decide whether or not for any two graph, G and H, the domination number of G and the dominate the product of both domination number uh, is less of equal than the domination number uh, of the Cartesian. And five years later, in this uh, survey about uh, unsolved problems in graph theory, he said, hey, okay. I posed this question five years ago, and no one says nothing about that. What is happening here? He said something like that. Um, maybe he uh, didn't realize how difficult is this question. Um, and, and looking this uh, this uh, results or the, the theorem seven and the question in the first paper, I, I'm trying to. Imagine him thinking about this problem. Um, um, so let's have a look to both uh, bounds. The upper bound indeed is quite easy to obtain. Um, the idea is that uh, if we have a minimum dominating set of G, let's consider one factor, then uh, the Cartesian product as sets of G and the uh, whole vertexes of the other factor is a dominating set of the Cartesian product. In this is a very big dominating set in general. It's a very big dominating set. So maybe you can do it better. So uh, the domination number is at most the cardinality of this uh, big, let's say big dominating set. And is uh, this, uh, the number of element here is the domination number of G and the uh, number of vertices of H, and the same with the other uh, factors. So in this, the upper bound is, um, uh, is easy to obtain and also uh, fits with the um, Cartesian structure in some sense. However, for the other, um, for the other bound, for the uh, lower bound, I'm trying to guess what was this in thinking about. Um, something like that, <laughs> maybe. What's the idea behind this, uh, this question? Well, uh, if you take a minimum dominating set of G, let's say D, and a minimum dominating set of H, let's say uh, R, the Cartesian product in general is not a dominating set uh, of the uh, Cartesian product graph. And what happened here is that in general, it's a very, very small uh, set. It's too small to be uh, a dominating set. So maybe he thought, okay, because this um, set is very small, maybe you cannot do it. Uh, with just a small number of vertices, um, a, a dominating set should be at least this number of vertices. So maybe this is the idea. But uh, the, the thing is that uh, this question is still open. Uh, 60 years, uh, was posed 60 years ago. It is called uh, the Bissing conjecture. It's a, a well-known uh, conjecture. Um, of course, there are a lot of work around it. Um, it is known that it's true for particular cases, uh, for uh, graph families, uh, when, you, when you ask some extra properties uh, for one or for both uh, factors, 
properties about the girth or the maximum degree or the diameter or, as I said, for um, uh, particular cases or uh, particular um, graph families like um, uh, or grids or special Cartesian product. Uh, also, there are some work related to um, uh, putting here not this uh, this uh, bound but something smaller like the half of the bound uh, um, and something like that. And also, there are some uh, words that uh, some papers that um, uh, relate this conjecture with other structure outside graphs. Uh, it's like a, write uh, this uh, conjecture in other language, uh, in the language of algebra or in the language or uh, some um, uh, something in computer science that I don't understand. And, uh, try to write this uh, conjecture with other, or to, to prove or disprove this conjecture with other tools, but at the moment it's still open. So um, it's, a, it's a very nice uh, conjecture. Um, I hope uh, I, I uh, will have the opportunity to see the final uh, answer soon. <laughs> Um, but even for uh, these two structures, the Cartesian product of the domination, the dominating set that in general um, doesn't fit. There are special cases where everything is uh, easy, um, everything is smooth. Uh, let's have a look to this. Uh, Chess uh, puzzles. Uh, this the rook problem. It's uh, the same kind of problem, but not with queens, but with rooks. Is uh, to find the minimum number of rooks needed to occupy or attack all squares, and have in mind that here you can move the rook in the uh, column or in the in the row. Uh, so. Uh, if we uh, represent this problem with uh, a graph model, we obtain this uh, this graph because here uh, take for instance this uh, this row, because we can move uh, a, a root to any uh, square uh, in the row. We put an edge between all the vertices in the in the row, and the same with all the rows. Um, it's the same situation with the column. We can move the root in uh, to any from any uh, square on the row to any square on the row. So in the last here, we put an edge between any two vertices uh, in each column. So the graph we obtain here is the Cartesian product of two complete graphs. And uh, in this graph model, the Problem uh, of the roots uh, can be read in the in the language of the graph. Note that uh, an square is not attack uh, for any root if there is no tower in the in the column and in the row. Uh, so here means that there is no uh, vertex in the dominating set in the column or in the row. So a dominating set in the Cartesian product of two complete graphs uh, means that every row has a vertex of the dominating set or every column has a vertex of the dominating set. And the uh, optimal way to do that, to obtain that, is considered the minimum among rows and columns and put one uh, rook or put one vertex of the dominating set uh, in that row or column. So the domination number of the uh, Cartesian product of two complete graphs is the minimum of uh, the sizes uh, of the factors. It's a general formula, not for all graphs, but for uh, all the family, the Cartesian product of two complete graphs. Uh, it's an easy formula. Um, it's not um, 
uh, using the domination, num domination number of the factors because uh, the uh, complete, gra uh, complete graphs have uh, uh, domination number one. Uh, indeed, uh, this is uh, the case where the upper bound by Bising is used. This case, this minimum is exactly the upper bound by BC. But in any case, this is an easy formula. So here, everything is okay. Everything is nice, everything is small. Um, so it is easy to do that with the complete graph. Let's go to the Cartesian product of two easy graphs, which are the paths. What happened with the uh, domination number of the Cartesian product of two paths? This graph, the Cartesian product of two paths, is called a grid uh, because <laughs> of, of the picture. It's the picture of a grid. Um, what happened here? Is this easy or not? Well, in this paper uh, from 1984, uh, the authors try to compute the uh, domination number of any grid, and they realized that it was not easy. Um, I'm sorry because this slide is, is full of letters, but um, first of all, uh, let's have a look to this formula. The author proved that asymptotically, uh, the domination number of the grid is um, the number of the vertices over five, uh, and also, they managed to obtain formulas for the dominating number of some small grids. And with a small, I mean that one of the factor is small. Uh, so they obtain this uh, value when uh, one factor is uh, a path with two, three, or four vertices. Um, I put the more or less the structure of the proof. Um, it's interesting because uh, in, uh, in the um, following paper, this uh, structure is more or less, more or less the same. Uh, what they did uh, with these uh, formulas, I put the example of the grid uh, P4, PM. First of all, you have to guess the formula. Um, you have to, uh, you need a good conjecture about the formula. Uh, how, you, uh, how they obtain uh, a, a good conjecture about the final result, uh, computing several particular cases, because um, what they do is uh, fix one path, in this case I, I put before, and uh, obtain a formula for uh, the other path, any path. So they try some particular cases, four, five, four, six, or whatever, and they say, okay, it looks like, looks like the general formula is uh, the Cartesian product of P4, Pn is M, for N greater or equal than 9. Okay, they, now they have a good conjecture. And with this conjecture, you have to prove two inequalities. The upper bound is the easy part because uh, to uh, prove that the domination a number of a graph is less of equal than something, you have to, um, to find a dominating set with that number of vertices. In that case, with n vertices. And maybe you can do it better, but at least you know that the domination number is at most n. Uh, here, with n is any um, size, uh, at least nine. The construction need to be regular because you need to extend uh, to any size. So try to find a regular construction of a dominating set with that number of vertices, in that case, n vertices. And now the most difficult part is try to prove that you cannot do it better, that um, you need uh, at least n vertices. Um, in the three cases, they, they prove uh, for M2, 3, and 4, the proofs are different. They use uh, induction for 2 and 3, um, uh, finding a contradiction in the case of uh, uh, M equal 4. And the, uh, the proofs are special for that cases. 
So there is um, this is more difficult because there is no general uh, proof that you can extend to any value of m. And this is why they prove just for two, three, and four. Um, now, of course, there are more, more papers uh, computing special cases or um, some particular cases, but let's move to this uh, thesis from 1992, uh, where the author, Cham, obtained the formula uh, of the, of the uh, domination number of degree for cases five and six. And he also provides this general upper bound, this general upper bound for both factors with at least eight vertices. And he also say that, okay, between eight and um, 16, I know that the upper bound is not the real value. However, all the cases I tried with a ball factor with at least 16 vertices, particular cases, follows this, uh, this formula. So uh, in this thesis, you can find the conjecture of, the, uh, of a general formula for the uh, domination number of the grid. And indeed, it was uh, the, the final formula, but this is the first time that this conjecture appeared. Uh, six years later, this is another um, thesis. Um, in this thesis, Anne Spalding uh, obtained the uh, domination number, domination number for grids with m uh, less of equal than 19, a lot of grids, um, because 19 is greater than 16, he uh, obtained that for these cases, between 16 and 19, the conjecture of chain is true. So he said, okay, it looks like this is the, the, um, the formula for all values. And another interesting thing uh, about this thesis is the uh, use of this tool, the mean plus matrix product. Matrix product. In this, this uh, particular matrix operation is used in some previous paper, uh, However, because this is not a paper and this is, this is a thesis, uh, you can find here more explanations, um, um, more considerations about what can you do and what can uh, you, uh, you cannot do with this tool, with the mean plus matic product in this problem of domination in Greece. So this is an interesting place to study um, this part of the problem. Uh, I put here just the definition of this uh, matrix product. In this is a uh, is a, a, a different uh, way to uh, multiply two matrices using this uh, semi ring uh, with the real number and the infinite. Uh, with uh, instead of addition, we use minimization, and instead instead of the product, we use the addition. That's more or less the, uh, the, the idea. Uh, and this is a very, very important tool in the computation of the domination number of bits. Um, this is the final uh, paper uh, for this computation. And uh, it's the, a paper from 2011. Um, the author saw that the conjecture of uh, Chang uh, is true. Indeed, uh, the, the formula proposed by Chan is the final formula for the domination number uh, in grid. As you can see, is uh, asymptotically uh, the number of uh, vertices m times n over five, but not exactly uh, m times n over five. Um, I would like to show the good ideas behind this proof. Um, on the one hand, uh, following the structure of the, uh, the first paper, you need um, a good conjecture. The conjecture is uh, the conjecture by Chan. Uh, this formula. He uh, found this uh, formula by computing small particular cases. 
Um, then to obtain this uh, inequality, the first inequality, uh, the idea is to uh, construct in some regular way a uh, domination, num domination number with this uh, exactly this um, number of vertices. And um, the idea of Chang was, okay, if we have an infinite grid, okay, infinite, 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 and you put here this kind of process, you have one vertex and the four neighbors, you can dominate the infinite grid with no overlapping um, between uh, the neighborhood of the vertices of the dominating set. So if the, uh, if the graph is infinite, indeed, you have the number of the vertices over five. However, if you have a finite grid, you cut here and cut and cut and cut, then what happened that, for instance, this vertex here with the red square is undominated. Uh, because um, the vertex in the uh, in the domination in the dominating uh, dominating set should be in the upper line, but here you don't have upper line, so include all the vertices in the border, which are undominated, and you obtain a dominating set. A dominating set with this number of vertices here in the floor function, and why minus four? Minus four is as you can see here. There are some occasion, and also here at the at the corners, that you can remove one vertex because it's not necessary. So there is a way to reorganize the vertices next to the border and remove four of them. That's that that's the the idea. Um, and this is okay. The half uh, of the proof because now we need to the other half with the. Uh, the reverse inequality that I said is the most difficult one. Uh, well, to the reverse inequality, um, I put here um, a, a bigger example. This 19 is 29, uh, 29. And you can see here that in the border, there are maybe consecutive vertices in the dominating set, but not just in the very, very border, but also in some uh, rows and columns next to the border. Okay, here also, this is minimum one, so you cannot remove. But um, looking at that e example, we can realize that this, um, that there is a, a different behavior of the vertices inside, where you have a very, very regular behavior, and the vertices next to the border when the behavior is not so regular. And it's not regular because the neighborhoods of the vertices in the dominating set overlaps. Inside, there is no overlapping. Next to the border, there is some overlapping. And how to control this neighborhood overlapping? And this is the key. In this paper by David Kichar, 2004, he proposed this tool to control the neighborhood overlapping. It is called the Waster domination. Uh, for any uh, uh, vertex set in the grid, the Waster domination is the difference between five times the number uh, of, uh, of vertices of, of the set and the number of vertices of the close neighborhood of the set. If there is no uh, neighborhood overlapping, the was domination is zero, but if uh, next to the border with this uh, neighborhood overlapping, the was domination is positive. Um, he proposed this idea. If you compute the what the domination for any dominating set, not necessarily minimum, all of them, and then the minimum, of course, it is less of equal than the was domination of any minimum dominating set. And if D is a minimum dominating set, the was the domination is, uh, a, 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 has a particular relationship with the domination number because the number of vertices of the minimum dominating set is the domination number, so five times domination number. And the number of vertices of the closed neighborhood is the number of vertices of the graph because the closed neighborhood is the whole graph. And then, if you can obtain a good, uh, as Gichar said, a good 
lower bound on this minimum or the minimum itself, but for any lower bound of this minimum, this m times n goes here, and this phi goes down, and then you have this lower bound. So what you have to do is to compute L good enough such that both bounds are equal. That's the idea. Indeed, this is, I, I, in my opinion, this is the cornerstone of the proof. Uh, of the formula of the domination number of grids. And in his paper, uh, Guichard uh, obtained this value for L and unfortunately was not enough because with his value, the lower bound and the upper bound was not equal. However, in the final computation of, the, uh, of this uh, parameter, uh, the author improved the value of L, and um, in this case, lower bound and upper bound are equal, and this was the end of the story. Um, and I know about this problem because I uh, have been uh, working in the computation of the domination number of the cylinder. The grids are okay. The, um, all the cases are known. However, for cylinders, we are still working. Uh, we uh, adapted the ideas of Guichard uh, to the uh, Cartesian product of a path and a cycle. And we obtained that the domination number of the cylinder is this formula, but just in case of the uh, number of vertices of the cycle, is congruent with zero module five. And very, very recently, because it's not published, but you can find the paper uh, in, uh, in archive, Guichard uh, uses the same, I, I, I don't want to say our techniques because indeed they are, the, uh, the techniques are, are, are his techniques, but following the uh, ideas to adapt the techniques from grids to cylinders. He obtained this formula in uh, the case uh, of a cycle with a number of vertices congruent with two module five. As you can see, both formulas are quite different. And what happened here is that there is no general formula, that the, uh, but the formula depends on the parity of the uh, number of vertices of the cycle module five. And at the moment, we are still working in the rest of the cases. Uh, in fact, we have a positive answer uh, in the case of uh, N congruent with one module five. Um, three and four module five, well, um, we are still, uh, still um, working, the, uh, working the way. We don't know, we are still working. Um, I would like to uh, finish again uh, showing again the, um, this representation for the um, graph product Cartesian categorical strong lexicographic. As I said before, uh, it's very easy to see this relationship between the uh, edge sets um, because the uh, vertices, the vertexes are equal, and the edge set has this relationship. Think about that. If you have a dominating set in the Cartesian product, that means that you have some vertices here in this uh, vertex set, which is the same. And using the edges um, of the Cartesian product, you uh, dominate all the vertex set. So using the same edges, you can dominate the strong product, and using the same edges, you can dominate the lexicographic product. So this um, relationship between the vertex sets and the edge sets gives this nice uh, inequality change with the domination number of the big four graph product. This um, uh, is a straightforward um, inequality chain, but in any case, I think it's very, very nice. Um, that's all. Uh, I wanted to talk about. Thank you. Thank you very much. 
Thank you very much, uh, Marilu. Very, very nice uh, talk. I think uh, uh, this is our idea of CAR. I think that uh, the student can uh, have a very good idea of what is the problems to work in graph theory. So thank you, thank you very much. So I don't know if somebody has a question. I don't have a question, but <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so maybe I would like to say that uh, as you show in the math, the mathematics uh, work is very difficult to be a dominating person, really. <laughs> 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 okay. We have any question, Juli, or not? No? Okay. No questions in Europe. Okay. If we receive questions, we send you, Marilu. Thank you very much for your nice thank talk. You, thank you. Thank you. And yes, I like to say that uh, now that we finish, we can see in uh, Facebook the video and uh, poster of uh, today. And uh, we wait for you tomorrow, again, the same time for the talk of Linda Lesniak and Diego Gonzalez, our invited speakers of tomorrow. So thank you very much to everybody. And see you tomorrow. Bye bye. 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 Gracias, Rita. Bye bye. bye. Gracias, los demás. Chao. Bye. Chao. Bye. 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 Bye.